Welcome to another edition of the PE Pipe Alliance's Education Series, where today we're in Lakeland, Florida with Wolseley Industrial and Strongbridge International. The purpose of today's demonstration video is to show the proper tooling necessary to accomplish a large diameter electrofusion in the field. So we're going to do a 24 inch electrofusion coupler in the field with the right tooling. Let's take a look. All electrofusion couplers come wrapped in plastic to protect from contamination and prevent oxidation of the inside of the coupler. The coupler label confirms pipe size, dimension ratio, and the fusion parameters of the fitting. The proper stab depth for each pipe is half the measured width of the coupler. This stab depth should be marked on both pipe ends. All pipe entering the coupler must be prepped with a rotary peeler to ensure that any oxidized layer on the outside of the pipe has been removed to expose clean, virgin polyethylene. Large diameter pipe may not be perfectly round. The extent and direction of ovality can be determined by measuring the pipe diameter in multiple locations. Pipe that is out of round will not interface properly with the coupler and adequate fusion force will not be achieved. Hydraulic reround clamps which eliminate ovality of the pipe ends are a crucial tool for correcting out of round pipe prior to fusion. After allowing the pipe to reround, measuring the pipe diameter in multiple locations will confirm that the pipe is now sufficiently round. Coupler pull tools assist in the assembly of pipe and coupler. Their use is a preferable practice to striking the coupler with a mallet, which could damage the coupler and compromise fusion. Three flexible restraints must be fused to each pipe end. The coupler pull tools will pull against the flexible restraints as the coupler is pulled onto the pipe. Pipe preparation for each flexible restraint is identical to preparation of the pipe ends. The area of interface between pipe restraint is marked, hand peeled and cleaned prior to fusion. The barcode on the flexible restraint will communicate the fusion parameters to the fusion processor. The flexible restraints must be allowed to cool for the entire duration of the cooling time listed on the fitting label. After the appropriate cooling time has elapsed, the pull tools can be placed against the flexible restraints and secured against the pipe wall using two ratchet straps. Beveling the outer edge of the pipe ends will ease the assembling of pipe and coupler. Before inserting the pipe into the coupler, clean the outside of the pipe with isopropyl alcohol with a concentration of 96% or greater. Allow the isopropyl to evaporate. The inside of the fitting should also be cleaned with the same concentration of isopropyl. Lift and transport the coupler with a nylon sling. Wire slings and chains can gouge polyethylene pipe and fittings. Using a lever hoist, connect the pull tools fastened to the pipe end to the pull tools secured to the coupler.
By tightening each ratchet in turn, slowly pull the coupler onto the pipe end until it reaches the stab depth marking. Check for gaps between coupler and pipe using a feeler gauge. Clean the outside of the second pipe with isopropyl alcohol and allow the isopropyl to evaporate. Disconnect the level hoist from the coupler and connect to pull tools connected to the opposite pipe end and pull it into position. Now it's time to fuse the coupler. The electrofusion processor's leads connect to the coupler. The barcode on the coupler will communicate the fusion parameters to the fusion processor. The processor will fuse the coupler for the time listed on the coupler's label. Cool Time Post Fusion is also listed on the label.